Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Girl Podcast. I'm Stephanie Laska, best-selling author and creator of Dirty Lazy Keto. And I'm Tamara Sneezik, professor of sociology. We believe there are many paths, often unconventional, to achieve your goals. But we get stuck thinking we have to follow experts and fixed set of rules. Well, as the leader of the Dirty Lazy Keto Facebook support group with over 200,000 members, I see people are hungry for a fresh approach, not just for weight loss, but to help live their very best life. Season two of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast will provide lifestyle advice, lots of fun support, and practical tips to help you at home. Because you know what? You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Join us. Tamara, when I was a little kid, I remember being told not to eat sweets because I needed to lose weight. Aww. That's what everybody kept telling me. Yeah. And I, you know what? I knew I was pudgy, but I just couldn't stop those taboo foods. Oh, I'm a rebel. All your friends had it. Everybody did. But maybe it was because I wasn't allowed to. Um, but I used to get on my little uh, banana bike. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember that with the tassels? With the banana seat? With the I banana seat. Mm -hmm. And I would um, cross the light, which I wasn't allowed to do. Oh. And I would go to stop and go. And I would spend my entire allowance on candy. Yeah. And this is the Me funniest too. part or saddest. What? I would spend my candy money on candy I didn't like because I would buy the cheapest candy possible so to get have, more. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd buy all this like, like taffy and lick em sticks and stuff I didn't even like just because yeah. I could get more. Because quantity. Quantity mattered. So I would eat as much as I could and then I'd ride my little banana bike home and I would hide it all behind my teddy bears on the top shelf of my bedroom. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of stories like that. Well, like you, I have a lot of restrictions about eating sugar. In fact, my mom was before her time in terms of hating sugar, like we couldn't have sugary cereals, candy at the house, ice cream, she never bought them. Um, but um, we could have them on special occasions like birthdays or to celebrate an accomplishment. But the problem for me was that in my mind, first of all, they became forbidden food, so that made me want them more. And I associated them with doing good things and being rewarded. And to this day, honestly, like I'm at, for example, I'm at work and there's treats. I have this little mental conversation like, oh, I deserve it. I've, I've done such a good day. I've worked so hard today. Uh, this is my reward. So I, I, I have that mentality about sweets. Well, I know our listeners might agree with us. This uh, being addicted to sugar and just loving sweets. Yeah. It's important because you know what? The diet police are out there. They're always trying to shame us for liking these things. Yes. They make us feel bad, like there's something wrong with yeah. us. But the reality is it, it's here. We're addicted. I, I'm never going to yeah. stop wanting something yeah. sweet. No yeah. matter how much willpower I have, I'm always going to want something sweet once in a while. Yeah. And, and, and should we have to give it up entirely? I don't, you know, it may be physical that we want it, or it might be emotional. I don't know. Um, it I sounds think... like we could probably talk all day about the emotional. <laughs> well, today... <laughs> we all have our emotional issues. I know, for sure. Maybe we should just divide it up. Huh? Okay, so today we'll talk about the physical reasons we might be addicted to sugar. The reasons we are addicted to sugar. It's not even a might. Um, there's like a lot of research that says it, there's some physical reasons. So get ready. We're going to unveil our, as Stephanie likes to call it, patented, 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 <laughs> dirty, lazy girl methods. You can try at home to break the sugar addiction cycle. But first, let's take a quick break. Well, Tamara, I know a lot of our listeners are starting off uh, the year 2020 with a weight loss goal, and I'd like to help them. Uh, my new book will help teach our listeners how to make 100 affordable, easy recipes, easy that are all 10 carbs or less, 10 net carbs per less. Um, and it's called the Dirty Lazy Keto Cookbook, Bend the Rules to Lose the Weight. And you can order it on my website or at any store near you, dirtylazyketo.com slash books. Okay, so we know there's reasons we crave sugar. Okay, and the physical ones are a real thing for sure. Um, but why? I mean, what are, why, what's going on physically that's making us like want sugar all the time? Well, you know, 
I bet everybody has had this experience where they finish a really big meal. Yeah. And then they crave something sweet immediately. I do. I always thought that, that was a social, like, learning thing. It might be both, but really the body, when you have a giant meal, your yeah. blood sugar kind of gets all crazy. Uh, and so your body is craving a little bit of sugar huh. physically because yeah. it's trying to, like, re, you know, reboot or raise your blood sugar. Oh, wow. I did not know that. So that's a physical truth. Wow. It's not your fault. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I think too, um, a lot of studies show that, um, eating sugar makes you crave more sugar. Oh, you got that right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like me with my sugar-free gum situation yeah. where I yeah. eat the entire pack. Yes. Yeah. Cause I get a little taste for it yeah. and I'm like, Oh, give yeah. me another one. Your body's like, Oh, please have more. Please have more. Yeah. Sugar begets sugar. It does. It does. Well, you know, you can just look at something sugary, like you mentioned at work, passing yes. by the break yes. room. If you look at sugar, it it's documented. It physically like has an effect. Your mouth can start watering. Your oh, wow. blood sugar levels can change in anticipation. Oh, People's wow. heart rate changes. Yeah. And you know, we're surrounded by advertisements with like delicious looking sugary foods all the time. Yeah, physically, yeah. your desire can be triggered just by looking yeah. at it. And work, you've been into my work. What, what on the way in here they had a there's big, a big box of candy for crying out yes, loud and a giant thing of sugary caramel coated popcorn which honestly does make my mouth water every time i go by it well i bet if you're feeling tired your body yes. might want to start yes. walking down the hall to that candy and popcorn yes because so, it does give you a boost doesn't yes. it yes and your body says okay you're tired so what does it do it it makes you crave sugar because that will cure the problem. So being tired, physically tired, or even not enough sleep, which was mm -hmm. related. Yeah. Let's um, go together. Yeah. And there's a lot of studies that document lack of sleep. People who lack sleep crave sugar more for sure. I would agree with that one. Yeah. And hormones. Okay. Oh, that's another yes. thing. Like, okay, women, we all know around our period or PMS, we crave sugar. I mean, how many times have I gone to the store and got a box of tampons and a chocolate bar? <laughs> It's true. And then I think, oh, that sugar's looking at me. <laughs> it's calling like, your name. Hello, they but, go together. We know funny. low estrogen and progesterone can trigger sugar cravings. Physically. Yeah, Physically. Is, we're like, not talking this, emotional people. No, yeah. This is not social. It's, it's legit. Pure biology. We've done a lot of research over here in dirty, lazy, keto. <laughs> yeah, you can lazy, look it up. Lazy girl land. <laughs> Um, you know, you can just be thirsty, Tamara. Like, just dehydration uh, can trigger sugar cravings. Me. Yeah, That surprised me because I thought it was just food. I could see food doing it, but drink. I don't know. But, you know, it That's makes sense, say. right? Because yeah. we do get sugar through fluids. Mm -hmm. So your body, when it's thirsty, thirsty. Mm -hmm. will make you crave it. So the other thing, too, is um, if your digestive bacteria is off. So, for instance, if you have, like too much bacteria um bacteria feeds on sugar so your body will start craving sugar when you have too much bacteria and so how do you know <laughs> and what do you do about it basically the solution is probiotics huh. yeah it's like it keeps your digestive bacteria regulated and so you'll crave sugar less learn something new every day I from Tamara. very know. smart well this one might apply to me I mean, my whole life, I really avoided protein and fat, um, yeah. which makes no sense, really. But people kept telling me fat was bad for me, and I just didn't really care for protein as a yeah. kid. So yeah. all I did was eat carbs. And, I, you know, my body might have been craving sugar only because it was malnourished. I wasn't eating, you know, anything yeah. else but just, like, popcorn and yeah. cereal. You don't, you don't generally crave meat, even though that may right. be exactly what you need. Yeah, maybe my whole nutrition was off. Yeah, I believe that. Could be. Yeah, and I think once you get more in tune with that, you start recognizing it that you need protein, but it's something you have to work at, I think. Well, I'm sure that our listeners agree with us that you're not a bad person if you're craving sweets. No, in fact, your body's being clever. Yeah. Trying to tell you something. It's not your fault. No. And just to be clear, when we are talking about sugar in today's episode, we are referring to all the very sneaky names sugar might be yeah, known as. Yeah. I mean, just because it's called something more organic or healthy on the label, like yeah. honey, agave, maple syrup. Yeah. Brown rice syrup. I've whatever. Tapioca syrup. You can yeah. call it whatever you want. We know what it's talking about. Fructose, sucrose. Fructose, glucose. Yeah. Anything sucrose. with an O-S-E, right, is sugar. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. There's a lot of ways you can stop or tame the sugar beast. Yes. And today we're going to explore some methods that could help you control that craziness. Let's do it. I need it. But you know what I'm kind of excited about this topic, Tamara, okay. is because I want to hear your opinion on these. We're okay. not going to just say what okay. what the research says. <laughs> well, because, you know, there's not one right way to do anything. I hope people get that message from us. Like, there's a zillion ways. There's and a you, lot of different ways you, you can be successful. Yeah, you have to do what's right for you. Okay, well, what's okay? What's okay. our first, first method? Yeah. Okay, the first method, which a lot of people talk about, is cold turkey. This is the all or nothing approach, getting rid of all sugar, throwing yeah. it all away. Yes. Going okay, through well, your drawers. Oh, hell no. No. <laughs> okay, well, does this work? No, not for me. Why not? Because then I feel deprived. Okay. And then I'll, so I'll hold off, hold off, hold off, and then I'll binge. Oh. Because I'm like, I'm deprived. I'm unhappy. Uh -huh. I'm not getting what I want or need. I, I just, for me, yeah, I'm, but I'm kind of that way with anything. Mm -hmm. I think there's certain people that can, that need the, like my husband is an all or nothing. Like he, he can't have any sugar or he'll, he'll just eat it. Yeah. So he has to go cold turkey, throw everything out. If I do that, it's like self-sabotage. Oh yeah. We're all having you? our therapy session today. I know. <laughs> what <laughs> I about you? It. We're going deep people. <laughs> um, you know, I think cold turkey does work for me in some ways. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it could. I mean, there's certain things in my life that I just can't have Yeah. because I'll eat it all forever. I'll yeah. not stop. Yeah. Um, let me give you an example. Okay. I love movie popcorn. Oh, me too. I mean, yeah. the love affair I have with popcorn <laughs> is serious. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to work in a movie theater when I was like yeah. 15 and I just, the smell, it just yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. 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 So, so I know it's not sugar to some of our listeners. They might be like, that's not candy, yeah. but in my opinion, it converts to it sugar. converts to sugar yeah. very rapidly in my blood, and it makes me trigger um, cravings for sweets. So I cannot have it. Yeah, I have to be done with the popcorn, people. Yeah, I got to cut it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So maybe maybe on certain things it's all or nothing. For me, that works. Like cold yeah. turkey, no buttered popcorn from the movies yeah. ever again. <laughs> I'm okay with that good i mean yeah how do you how do you get to be at peace with that i don't know it's just the decision i made it yeah. and i'm done yeah. it feels um relief not to think yeah. about it yeah like i couldn't just have yeah. a cup or two like some yeah. people i guess that's the, the good part about cold turkey is it takes away the decision making the for me decision. that's the worst part yeah. it's like well when do i stop how much when do yeah. i get to have it when yeah. does it end can i have one more bite yeah whereas this one is no you can't have any at all no decisions to be made it's and done. and that I'm good with that. It makes me yeah. feel powerful. It's not that I'm saying I can't have it. Yeah. I'm saying I'm choosing not to have it. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore it works. Yeah. For me. I guess you have to decide what's going to work for you. If you don't know, try all or nothing. And then if you find yourself feeling deprived and sneaking it. Yeah. And then denying that you're sneaking it, then you need a different method. That's the truth. So if it's yeah. not working and you try it, then try a different method. Yeah. Okay. So what if that well, doesn't work? What's another? Yeah. Well, the Give us an alternative. Yeah. The alternative would be the second one, which is moderation. Okay. So, but you know, obviously this isn't compatible with the first one. So if you either well, cold turkey, well, maybe, well, it could be though, because it may right. not be the trigger food, right? It could be some you're right. other kind of moderation you're right. type you're right. thing. So with moderation, you, and this is, takes some planning uh -huh. and you know you have to say okay well i'm gonna allow myself to have some but in moderation so you have to plan it you know like it works best when say you have a birthday party coming up you decide okay how, what sweets am i gonna allow myself to have and how much and when am i gonna stop and how am i gonna stop so you get it all planned out before you go if you say okay i'm gonna have a half a slice of birthday cake and then i'm gonna stop and i'm not gonna have the ice cream or the punch just a half a slice. So you're allowing yourself to have it, but you're doing it, you know, does that, does that work for you? That works a little better for me. I mean, it's hard because, you know, sometimes stopping at a half a piece is super hard. Yeah. You know, I have to just throw it away immediately. Cause if I have it the whole piece and I only eat half and I'm just, and the rest is like sitting there yeah, looking at you. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But I, in the long run, I'm better off if I do that. Cause okay. then I could walk away going, I'm not deprived. I actually, I got the cake. It was delicious. Yeah. And then I really enjoy it when I have it. And that's the other thing. If you're going to do moderation, 
you know, don't focus on, oh, I only have half a piece. You're like, I'm getting cake. Yeah. And then you just savor it and then stop. It's hard though. It's not, it's not easy. Well, even though I use a lot of sugar substitutes, yeah. you know, since I'm the dirty, lazy keto queen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love my sugar substitutes yeah. when, when I choose to. Yeah. Um, but even those, for me, I choose to use them in moderation. Yeah. And the reason why is even those sugar yeah. substitutes can trigger yeah. more cravings. Like I mentioned, yeah. chewing an entire pack of gum at once, yeah. which I often do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because I'm really classy yeah. like that. <laughs> but like, so here's an example. Like yeah. in my cookbook, I talk about my f birthday cheesecake. Yeah. And I, I may have talked about this in the past only because I, I do love my birthday cheesecake. It's delicious. You made me some. And honestly, it it's really quite delicious. I would choose that. Over anything, right? Yeah. So here's the thing, Tamara. I cannot make it all the time. I have to have it in moderation. I yeah. plan on my birthday or mm -hmm. on Christmas. And that's it. Yeah. And I eat the whole damn thing. Yeah. Because I, the one you <laughs> like gave me. I ate it all, girl, like in one day. Yeah. I love it. I don't know what portion you gave me, but I snarfed the whole thing in one day. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> it was delicious. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I know that sounds sad, like once a year, but yeah. there's other things I do have in moderation. Like, yeah. um, I make a jello freeze, like jello and yeah. ice, um, ice in the blender. Yeah. With a little half and half. I have that probably three days a week. Yeah. After dinner. Yeah. Um, but that's moderation to me. Yeah. I'm not eating like sugary stuff all day long, but I am yeah. enjoying it. And then you can look forward to it. You're like, yeah, okay, I do. On Wednesdays. It's, it's my little my, treat. Yeah. It's my little jello dessert thing, you know, keto dessert or whatever. Because uh, you can get carried away with the keto desserts. Oh, yes. You know, and it can yeah. add up. Like, oh, know, it does. That's why know. I drove some ice cream to Tamara's house the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, take this away from me. <laughs> take I, it. Take it away. I found it. <laughs> I had way too much happening in my freezer. But, you know, like, they, let's say they only have three carbs, but you have the whole freaking oh, yeah, let's two be pints honest of here. it. Yeah. yeah. It's delicious. That's but like 20 carbs. I can't do moderation on low carb ice cream. Yeah, it's like yeah. I can do a little bit once in a while yeah. or not, not yeah. at all. Like the birthday cake is something I can easily do because I'm not super a fan of birthday cake actually. Yeah. So just having a few bites of it is fine. That's a good strategy. But then, you know, you bring out the chocolate pie or something, it's mm -hmm. over. So some of these yeah. uh, strategies we're talking about can help you according to the type of food. Yeah. You might use one strategy for one food, yeah. and one for another. Exactly. Um, a third strategy is out of sight. This is a popular one at my house. Um, I think this, this one works for me. I don't know. Um, if I don't see it, I'm not interested. Yeah, it is better when you don't see it. Um, and, and it you, made, I tell people this when they say, oh, my family doesn't support me on yeah. Dirty Lazy Keto. I'm like, well, just move their foods so they can still have them, yeah. right? It's not like yeah. they need to get rid of their chips. Yeah. Just move them in a place where they don't yeah. stare at you in the face every time you open your pantry. Exactly. exactly. And that way they can support you, but still yeah. eat their own foods. Yeah. I've even told my husband to hide, you know, have your Oreos or whatever, but just hide them from me. Mm -hmm. And he will, you know. Uh, so <laughs> what? You're all looking for yeah. him? I knew you were going to say yeah, that. I was going to say that. I knew you were going <laughs> to be out looking in all the cabinets. <laughs> Where did this is a game. Like, I'm going to find See, those See, that Oreos. is an example of this not working for you. <laughs> do not do but strategy do. number three, Tamara. No, no but you yourself. Know, <laughs> it's not working. It does for something. I think, like you say, for some things. Okay. Like, the ones that aren't, like, super, um, like, my Achilles, you know, like, my, my, my passion or something. Those, if they're out of sight, I won't. Uh -huh. But if they're in sight and I'm bored or hungry, I'll yeah. eat them. Right. So those just, you know, why am I even having them in the cu the cupboard? Just well, moving them. stuff out of sight can physically help avoid that trigger. Yeah. So yeah. like, for example, I have a lot of things that are like sugar free that I don't really need to eat, yeah. but they might trigger a craving exactly. if I see them. Exactly. So like I keep a little bit of sugar free yeah. or low yeah. cocoa, whatever yeah. you call it, chocolate in the house, yeah. but I keep it like in the freezer, yeah. buried. I don't need it. No. And oh, I have a good example Just of that. Just stick it in the freezer somewhere out of sight. I, uh, uh, someone bought us a big bag of cashews, delicious. I put them in a bowl on the counter. Oh no, that's yeah, bad. It was her, every time I want, I'm like, oh, they're all hello, one. Tamara. I, <laughs> hello, Clarice. Like, yes. Yeah, that's not so, good. So yeah, that one. And again, nuts aren't something that I crave or anything. But walking by it every day, I'll pop one in. If it's in your face, you yeah, might be more exactly. likely to eat it. Exactly. 
I do this next strategy is called, um, I do this quite a bit, the planned substitutions. Yeah. I, okay. What do you mean This is probably my favorite. Okay. And I, I mean, some of these kind of bleed into each other. Right. Uh, but for me, in, instead of trying to just eliminate something altogether, I'll deliberately plan on enjoying yeah. something that's safe for me. Okay. Um, so it's not like moderation. It's a sub, It's a complete substitution. Yeah. Okay. I guess some of these are tricky, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's just different. Yeah. It's different. So like, I know I talked about my Jello snack that I like to make after yeah. dinner a lot. That is a planned substitution, but it's yeah. also something I do in moderation. It's both. It's kind of both. Yeah, it's both. Um, and you that's why, you know, Dirty Lazy is, I think, so popular is because it does allow for substitutions a lot easier. Yeah. Whereas strict keto, man, you don't have any substitutions. You just have to be feel deprived all the that's time. That's like a all or nothing yeah. cold turkey approach. Yeah. That's just doesn't work for me. I mean, no. maybe if you were like addicted to heroin or something, I can see the benefits <laughs> of the cold turkey. Right. But for me, it's just, yeah. it would make me want it more. It does. See? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't see anything wrong with the substitution. Like you said, you know, you shouldn't be eating, you know, cups and cups of Splenda. It's probably not a great idea, but to have it you know, t for one tree to get you through the day. Like, yeah, we're all different. We're all starting in different places. I have I to see. tell you though, something funny. I was reading, doing a lot of research about sugar substitutes mm -hmm. for some of the books I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And on like the USDA website, uh -huh. you know, they, they have a breakdown of all the stuff, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it says like how much you're allowed per day, according to the government. Oh, really? That's technically, um, they call it grass, generally reviewed as safe or something okay. similar to that. Um, but one of them, I remember it said you were allowed to have 20 packets a day was, and it's was still grass. Safe? Yeah, up oh, to 20. Oh, well, oh. I was like, I think I'm over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think I'm over the 20 a day. Yeah, but that surprises me. Well, they have I to have a limit say, according to what they've tested. Yeah. I mean, I the research is... Say, I thought they say none. So the fact that... Oh, no. You, well, it's a, like some of these are allowed in the U.S. Some yeah. are not. Some yeah. have not been approved. Yeah, yeah. We all have our favorites, but yeah. yeah, not all of them have been approved by the FDA, uh, okay. but the ones that are approved, they have a limit okay. to what's been actually yeah. studied. Mm -hmm. And one of them says 20 packets a day. And I was like, I'm so over that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, plan yeah. your substitutions. Yeah. But like you said, you may want to take a look at what's yeah. safe and what's, yeah. what's a good idea. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, both, you know, based on your experience or what you know. Yeah. Um, and probably the next one is probably, I think one that it's really important and uh -huh. we don't realize how important it is, which is just to eat healthy to begin with. <laughs> like that one is so boring. No, I hate that I one. Know. It's like freaking eat your fruit or eat your veggies, especially well, fruits, but veggies yeah. and protein. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have um, a, like a sweet fruit, that that's a kind of substitution, I guess, for like a cookie. But those having those things gives you that fiber that fills up your stomach and that protein that you're probably needing and the fat that you're needing. I, I swear that's been a major downfall in a lot of my diets. I could pin it on that. I'm not eating enough fat and I'm not eating enough protein. So my body's just craving carbs all day long. Yeah. It really, you should try it if you haven't. It really does help. I mean, obviously you don't eat, you know, fat all day or, you know, only protein because there's issues with that but i think most of us actually don't get enough what do you think well for me i know when i'm eating better like yeah. eating you know healthier meals and not yeah. skipping i'm yeah. not trying to fast or do any yeah. of that then i feel better about myself yeah i feel healthier like if i eat a giant salad for lunch yeah. i'm not i'm craving physically yeah. a bunch of sweets because i've taken care of my body already yes. and yes. i feel good Yes. It's kind of like going to the gym and then, you know, having a big healthy day of healthy yeah. eating. Yeah. Then I'm not going to want to eat a bunch of junk and ruin it. Yes. No, like physically, true. my body feels like full and happy. Yes. It takes the cravings way down. And the other mistake I make is it's not any protein, right? Because one of the things I've done on keto is uh, eat a bunch of like bad proteins, like, you know, beef jerky sticks and salami and cheese 
Yeah. And that doesn't, that makes me feel terrible too. So the quality of the proteins matter. Yeah. That's what you're saying. So for like me, eating real food, like yeah. eating a piece of chicken, eating right. real turkey, eating yeah. a hamburger if you want, but not necessarily fish. the, yeah. Like the, the fast food version. That's the problem. Yeah. So and those are fine if you want them, but if that's all you're eating, right. you're right. I could see how that might make you feel not satisfied. Right. Your body's like mad at you. It's mad at me. It's like, you know, it'll start craving the healthier, you know, the healthier thing. So I mean, sadly, we need it all, right? Yeah. We've got to have our vegetables yeah. in so, order to yes. round it out. So first thing, you know, are you eating enough veggies? Are you eating enough protein? Are you getting enough water? Um, and as we mentioned before, probiotics, that's another thing, mm -hmm. you know, try to work it into your diet. Uh, uh, what, what were the good sources of pro yogurt, right? So for me, I know I eat a lot of yogurt with the live cultures. Yeah. I like sauerkraut yes. when you buy it fresh, like yes. in the deli section. Yes. Also pickles that are in the deli section. Yes. They have that benefit of the fermentation, which yeah. adds more probiotics to your and diet. Kombucha or whatever. Com what's that one? You know, my daughter likes that one. I don't yeah. enjoy that as much because it has more sugar. Yeah. And you can, I don't, you can find I don't it like those, it, but, um, but it's hard yeah, to find. Those yeah. are options that you can use. Yeah. And don't skip meals. Not skipping. Yeah, that's another. When you big start one. getting hangry, yeah, that's when the the physical cravings for sugar come out. Yeah. Your body is just trying to take care of itself, it and is. it's freaking hungry. Yeah. So if you haven't eaten in a day or two, yeah, like people think they need to do yes. for fasting, that's when people go nuts. Yeah, they start binging. It it's yeah. all happened. We've all been there. Yeah, and everybody's slightly different. Like I know people who can go, you know, six hours and they won't have a sugar craving. I can't. For I me, need, I can't either. No. And I maybe it's it. emotional. I don't know. Maybe. But if I go longer than three or four hours. If I'm I go still... like more than five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm still like kidding. Should we break for a snack? <laughs> okay. It's, I'm hungry now. So, but you know what? You don't have to do all of one or, right. or the other. I hope we made that clear today. Yeah. <clears throat> it's pretty evident that Tamara and I kind of bounce around according to the food group. It yeah. could be chocolate or it could be like popcorn, like we talked about, like all yeah. sorts of foods might warrant a different approach. Right. And you have to do what's going to work for you. Yes, exactly. Not for your mom or your coworkers. No. no. Yeah. You got to kind of pick and choose and play with it. Yeah. And if it's not working, like the Oreos at Tamara's house, yeah. <laughs> the out of sight method is not effective. No, Tamara will one. find the Oreos. <laughs> It's like my mission. And like me those. with moderation with low carb ice cream. Yeah. I can't do it. That's why yeah. I drove it to Tamara's house. <laughs> so listeners, we want to yeah. know what's helping you curb your sweet tooth. Yeah. Tell us your story. Send me an email, stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or via Facebook or Instagram. You can even leave us a voicemail, 802-58-KETO-6. That's 802-58-3866. So before we go to our final hacks, let's take a final break. Tamara, I know we're talking a lot about sweets today, so I kind of want to address the topic of the fat bomb. Spoiler alert, I don't really think uh, fat bombs are going to help you. So in my new book, The Dirty Lazy Keto Cookbook, Bend the Rules to Lose the Weight, I share honest recipes with real food, not the fat bomb, that helped me to lose 140 pounds. All of the recipes are under 10 net carbs per serving. The book is available in stores everywhere and at dirtylazyketo.com slash books. Okay, what are our hacks, Stephanie? Ooh, I keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. Okay, so um, my hack is a substitution, actually. It's a type of substitution, which are to get creative with spices. I found that really helpful for me to create you know, curb the cravings without adding sugar. So for instance, um, using cocoa powder, you can mix that in yogurt to give it like a chocolatey taste or cinnamon in your coffee. And especially if you mix those spices with full fat, like milk or cream or whatever, um, it makes like a fabulous desserty feeling coffee or yogurt or whatever. I mean, other things might be vanilla bean or nutmeg or monk fruit. Um, but I would say, you know, experiment with these spices or um, extracts. You can use those too um, to give yourself a nice substitution. I think substitution might be our favorite now that I hear <laughs> us talking about it. Yeah. I was thinking a little bit more about moderation mm -hmm. and just how hard that is for me. Yeah. Um, 
You know why? It's because sometimes I just want to eat a, a lot of something and I don't yeah. really want to be limited. I want to just go crazy yeah. if I want to. Yeah. I think that's maybe part of my problem. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think one of the reasons I've been successful in keeping off 140 pounds is that I'm not judging myself anymore. I'm allowing myself uh, some unlimited substitutions. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you an example. I know I mentioned eating whole packs of sugar-free gum. Yeah. Um, but another one I do is I make a lot of just sugar-free Jello, yeah. and I eat a lot of that. Not the frozen one mixed with ice, but just Jello in general, because yeah. it's like super low calorie, and you can eat. It's very and a boatload. It, yes, but you know what? I I'm not shaming myself, Let and go. I think that's the real issue. I think that is the real issue. Because the shame is gone. I'm not going to be beating myself up no, anymore because it's working for you. Why should we feel bad about ourselves? No. Our body craves sugar and sweets sometimes, yeah. physically, and we shouldn't be ashamed about that. No. This doesn't make you a bad person, listeners. We don't want sugar controlling you or getting in your way to success. So go out there and lead your best dirty, lazy girl life. And eat your sweets. If you want to. If you want to. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl Podcast. And don't forget to visit dirtylazyketo.com where you can join the conversation and gain access to all kinds of free content to help you on your dirty lazy journey. If you enjoyed today's podcast, consider supporting us by subscribing, rating, and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Be sure to stay tuned for our next Dirty Lazy Girl podcast where we give you even more tips and support. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.